Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. I don't know why I said it so weird today. Uh, it is September 4th, 2024. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's extra bonus problem that I'm doing. Um, as usual, I am going to let RNG decide this one. Let's give it a go. Uh, we have 44 wildcard matching. It's a hard problem. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm an okay today. Hopefully, I, this still won't take too long. Um, but we'll let we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll let it we'll, we'll take a look. <laughs> take a look. All right, forty-four wildcard matching. Given an input string s and a pattern p, implement wildcard pattern matching with support for um, question mark and star. Where, yeah. So, oh god. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a very classic problem. Um, we have to kind of look at the constraints real quick. N is 2000. I mean, I, I think the classic solution is dynamic programming. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, we just match one at a time. And really just uh, calculate it. Um, yeah, let's start with top down. But I think this is a very standard problem. Uh, I don't really have much to say right it's just basically a variation of technotech and just thinking about the states so let's get started and we'll talk about the code as we implement it i think that's the best way to think about it um but honestly i think this is also one of those problems that is very um uh yeah is a uh, very um like a very uh intuitive proof force way right so, okay, so we have index X, S and index P for the input, which corresponds to the index of S and P. Um, and then basically, we have, let's think about base cases, right? So if index of P, does that have to match the entire string, right? Okay, so yeah, if index of S is equal to, say, um, N S, and index of P is equal to and p then we return true right that means that we're done on both sides well, of course we have to define these um but you know i don't i think this is uh like i don't think these are yeah should be straightforward for now but then if only one of them is complete then uh then we then we're, we're premature so we're forced right otherwise then now we just do a comparison right so if S of we know that they're inbound. If this is equal to um, p of index of p, then we can return uh, is match index s plus one index of p plus one. Right? This kind of makes sense, right? Because if they're equal, then they should match, um, and there's really no choice. Um, this assumes that um, then uh, p is the pattern, right? P is not a question mark or a star. But of course, in that case, they, this would never match because I don't think that could be in the input on the S side, right? Maybe that's a little bit cheating. You could be more explicit if you like. Um, okay, fine. Let's actually clean that up real quick, right? So then if P index of P, so maybe we could do this first. If this is equal to um, question mark, then what happens? Well, that means that we match. Uh, then we match, right? So then now we can return is match index plus one index p plus one so same as before that um this just means that we match one character so this is always good um the other tricky one is of course if p index of p is equal to uh star then what what does that mean well let's uh let's pass for now um and then here then now if this yeah um yeah Yeah, let's pass for now. Uh, I mean, it, I, I just want to go over the other case where, okay, it, it, the pattern character is not a question mark or a star sign, and it is not the same. So then now we return false, right? Because, well, there's just no way to match if the current character doesn't match. So very quickly, we come back to here. Right? So maybe that was a very quick detour. But okay, so what does this mean, right? That means that we can match zero characters or one character or two character or three character. And the naive way to kind of think about this um, is to write a for loop here, right? But of course, well, what happens if you add a for loop? Well, let, let's go over the complexity uh, really quick. Index is going to be from 0 to uh, S or up to 2000, right? Uh, the other index of P 
is also 0 to p, which is up to also 2000. So that means that uh, already, uh, if you look at the time complexity, the time complexity is going to be equal to um, number of inputs times time per input, right? And number of inputs is going to be already 4 million, right? Um, so then that means time per input. Uh, right now, if we do nothing else, it's incorrect, but it is going to be all of 1, which is going to be honestly already a little bit tight, but uh, fast enough for me to take the risk. But if this has a for loop, then this is going to be all of, um, I guess in this case, all of S, because we're looping over uh, the number of characters we match on the S side, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's just going to be too slow because that's times another 2,000. Even if it's not always 2,000, like, you know, like most of the time is a substring of that. So maybe you could say half of that. But even that is too slow. It's going to be just too slow. So we have to kind of think about a, a more clever way to think about it, right? Instead of say we match 0, we match 1, we match 2, we match 3, we can actually just think about it um, in terms of the state a little bit more precisely, which is that we can say we can either match this one character and and keep the index p at the same because it is going to be at the uh, 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 um, the star, or this is all we're done and we match no character, right? So that's really basically the idea. I think will let us get to the end. And yeah, um, so one more thing, of course, is that we have not memorized, right? Um, because now it's going to branch out and do exponential things as we do in memorization. So yeah, so all we have to do now is just memorize the input. As we already kind of looked at the constraints, then let's kind of put it, put this here. Um, I, I do get a lot of questions about uh, using two different variables, is cache. Um, do I want P on the inside? I do. Um, but I think I just think it just makes it um, less explicit. Oh, sorry, it is more explicit, right? Because um, then now you could ask if it has cache um, index of s index of p. Uh, then we can return cache. Um, and of course, you can also say that if this is not equal to none or something. Like but but here, I, at least for teaching purposes. I think it's a little bit um, implicit, right? Because we're saying, okay, if it's not none, then we have a value, which is fine. But I, I think I, this is just, you know, the code is just so much uh, more direct. But, uh, but yeah, uh, for stuff like this, it's a little bit awkward for sure, because then now we have to write something like duh, 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 right? Uh, and then we can do the same here. And you could, I mean, and certainly there are other ways to write similar things. So um, as long as you have the right idea, it should be okay. Right. Ooh, okay. So what did we not get? Star. Oh, because of our base case. So here, we assume that if one of this, this is false, but if we still on the star sign, so okay. So I, I am wrong on this one. Um, hmm. So I guess if this is the case, I guess we have to separate them out is the thing, right? So if the pattern is done, then we're done no matter what. Otherwise, if this is the case, and um, if this is the case, then maybe we do it if index p, uh, if... Du, 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 du. I mean, this is one, but this is also why we do testing, right? So if this is a star, then we just return is match uh, index s index index p plus one, right? Um, yeah, because then now the star we allow the star to match nothing is what I want to do, um, and because index uh, we're done with index s, it has to match nothing. So yeah, um, yeah. Not gonna lie, my confidence is a little bit lower from this edge case, and it's a very tricky edge case. But this is also why we test, right? So that um, yeah, we we just cover our bases. Let's give a quick submit. Hopefully, this is fast enough. Uh, hmm. Oh, 
I'm just being silly. We uh, there's so much copy and paste here that I just forgot um, that <laughs> that I forgot to have to update this thing. But yeah, maybe that is one downside of having two things there. But uh, but I think it's it's more clear as exp as what we said. And also one thing that I just for I've, I'm just been very sloppy, honestly. Um, usually I don't write it this way. I think that's probably why. But um, yeah. I don't know. These things are early termination with memorization is a little bit tricky. Uh, but yeah, let's try with this test case as well. Um, I mean, I think also, honestly, I should just test one big case. It would have came out. I was just, I'm just being lazy today. That is my fault, right? Because, yeah, when you forget to cache something, it is very obvious because you could put anything. Like, what I could have done is even just like, you know, a lot of A's, uh, a couple of star things, and we should be good. In terms of right, like uh, well, now we have cash, but I mean, like before, that would have uh, timed out, right? Like if we didn't have this because I forgot it again, for instance, then uh, oh, well, this still has the other case, which also times out. Oh, somehow this is fast enough. I guess we have to add like random things like this, huh? That is wild. Huh. Sometimes the code just does, you know. But this is why we need more and more test cases. Um, and actually, I mean, I haven't done this during the daily problems uh, clearly enough. But if you watch me do um, the contest, I've been actually been more careful lately with more testing. Uh, so, I don't know, definitely check that out uh, for when I take things a little bit more seriously, maybe. But, um, Yeah, uh, what is the complexity here? I mean, I kind of touched on it, but not precisely, which is that, you know, uh, this is the number, the, 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 right? So the number of inputs, another way is at O of um, S times P, uh, the number of, the time per input is O of 1, so total time is going to be O of S times P, um, and of course, that is the total time and total space, because we have um, O of 1 space, right? So yeah, um, this is a classic problem, um, so definitely I could imagine it's showing up on interviews, so definitely be uh, be ready for, if not this one, like problems of a, of a similar difficulty. Uh, I know that uh, my colleagues in the past have asked something similar with respect to dynamic programming and pretty much, yeah, would expect people to know it. And that was a while ago, like you know, I haven't worked in... in, in uh, uh, in some time so you know so yeah um that's all i have for this one let me know what you think thanks for watching let me show you the top of the code the bottom of the code and that's all i have for today thanks for watching stay good stay healthy take good mental health i'll see y'all later and take care bye bye